test firing the 100 watt CO2 laser tube in three, two, one. <laughs> Holy crap, look at that. Did you see that fire? There's so much crap stacked on top of it. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. I just wanna make sure I don't break this. <laughs> this is a giant 100 watt CO2 laser tube. Check out how big this thing is. That is pretty scary. I can't believe 100 watts worth of laser comes out of the end of this tube. Pew, 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 pew. Now that I've got that out of my system, my name is Zach and here on Bite Size Engineering, I make ridiculous project engineering videos and I'm all about helping you to unleash your inner maker. I'm building a 100 watt CO2 laser cutter from scratch. If you follow along with this video series, you'll learn as I did that building your own laser cutter is probably easier than you think. To get a better understanding of what these parts are and why I chose them, let's take a step back. Laser cutters are awesome tools that can be used to cut through materials like wood, paper, cardboard, plastic, fabric, and they can even engrave things like stone, ceramic, and even metal. There have been so many projects on this channel that I would have benefited greatly from having a tool such as a laser cutter. If I were to get a laser cutter, I would want to have a power rating of at least 80 watts and a minimum cutting area of two feet by three feet. The problem is that laser cutters are often really expensive. You're gonna spend several thousand dollars to get a 40 watt laser. For example, the Glowforge Basic is a $3,000 laser cutter. It has a 40 watt laser tube and a cutting area of 11 by 19 and a half inches. If you upgrade to the Pro model, you're gonna spend $6,000 and you get a 45 watt laser with the same cutting area but they include a little pass-through door so that you can use larger material and I think they include a way to filter out all the fumes when you're cutting material. You can see where I'm going with this problem. I could spend several thousand dollars and still not buy a machine that has the specs and the requirements that I want. I've done a ton of research and if I wanted to buy an import laser cutter that meets my requirements I'm gonna spend eight to ten thousand dollars and it will cost double or triple that if I want to buy a laser cutter that is made domestically. I have a few options to go with here. Option number one, I could spend a few hundred dollars and buy an import laser cutter like the K40 Blue model. The problem with this is that it doesn't meet my requirements. It's a 40 watt laser and has a very small cutting area. Option number two is to spend several thousand dollars and buy a quality made laser cutter like the Glowforge. Again, it's a very nice machine, but it doesn't meet my requirements. Option number three is to spend eight or $10,000 for a higher quality import machine that actually meets my requirements. However, I think there's an option number four and that's to build my own custom machine that meets all of my requirements plus I can add a few extra nice to have features. Obviously, I'm gonna choose option number four otherwise you wouldn't really be interested in watching this video. Building my own machine means I can modify it and improve it over time. My goal for this project is to build a laser cutter that meets all my requirements, plus has some nice to have features, all for around $3,000. I've spent a ton of time doing a lot of research and watching videos, but none of the information I found was very comprehensive. In 2019, I stumbled across a fellow YouTuber named Rob Chesney. He released a whole series of videos of him building a custom laser cutter on his channel, Further Fabrication. Rob's video series is amazing. He goes into great detail of everything you need to know to build your own laser cutter. He also answered so many questions that I didn't even know that I had. It was one of those situations where I didn't know what I didn't know. I'm so happy that I stumbled across his channel and his video series because it was exactly what I needed to light the fire under me. To make things even better, Rob put in a ton of effort and released a digital build guide along with a bill of materials for his laser cutter build. I was really excited to purchase these materials from Rob and learn what I needed to know to build my own. I really liked the look and the design of Rob's laser cutter build, but there were still things that I wanted to change and do differently. Rob's laser cutter project was the perfect springboard for me to venture out and design and build my own laser cutter. As I do with all my projects, I started this one out by making a 3D model in Fusion 360. I like to spend a lot of time designing and making mistakes and problem solving in Fusion before I even start building something. I made this Fusion 360 design parametrically driven. That means that I can open up the parameters box and change the dimensions of the laser cutter on the fly. Eventually when I make a digital build guide for this project, this will come in super handy for people who want to build a laser cutter that is a different size. When I initially had the idea to build my own laser cutter, I felt very overwhelmed and I was in over my head. The key to getting over that feeling of being overwhelmed with a project like this is to break it down into smaller bite-sized pieces that are easier to manage. 
With the help of people like Rob from Further Fabrication, along with a lot of research and reading, I'm now feeling a lot more confident to take on this project. In order to get the laser to emit a laser from one end of the tube, you need to excite the gas inside with a bunch of voltage. Here I have a power supply that does just that. Let me show you how this laser cutter is going to use these mirror mounts and this focusing lens to cut through material. As I fire up this laser, the beam will come out unfocused out of this end here. All I need to do is place this mirror mount here and it'll cause the laser beam to make a 90 degree turn. I need the laser beam to make another 90 degree turn so I'll mount another mirror mount right here and this will also be fixed to the frame. It will not be moving. So now we've got the laser beam moving in the opposite direction that it started from. The next step will be to bounce the laser back towards the center of the cutting area. So I'll need to use another mirror mount, but this one will be mounted to the x-axis gantry. So it'll move like this. This mirror mount will always be aligned with this fixed one down here, but it'll just move back and forth, allowing the laser beam to go in this direction. And finally, to bounce the laser beam towards the cutting area, I use this final mirror mount, which also contains the focusing lens. So this bounces the laser beam towards the cutting area, and this will move along the y-axis. So if I need to make a cut, these will move in concert together in the x-axis, and this will move in the y-axis. Does that make sense? After the laser passes through the focus lens, it becomes very small and very powerful, and that's how it's able to cut through all of those materials. Obviously, this explanation is oversimplified, but that's the gist of a laser cutter. There's really not too many parts to it. I think the obvious next step is to connect up the power supply and do a test fire of this laser tube. While I'm connecting everything up, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, and that's Altium. If you're like me, you're constantly working on projects that involve electronics. Maybe you're making an Arduino project or maybe a Raspberry Pi project or some sort of IoT thing, or maybe you're making a robot. You're gonna need a circuit board for that project. And in order to design that PCB, you're gonna want to use a reliable PCB design software. And that's why I'm recommending Altium Designer. What I like about Altium Designer is that it's an all-in-one platform. That means that you don't have to open up separate programs to do your schematic capture or your component selection or your board layout and your netlist generation. It's all in one platform. If you wanna get serious about making PCBs, there's a link in the description where you can get a free trial of Altium Designer. When you download that free trial of Altium, you're also gonna discover one of the other features that I like, and that's Altium 365. Altium 365 is a cloud workspace that allows you to save your project files in the cloud. That means that you can collaborate with other people, you could work on various machines without losing your work. A whole team of engineers can be collaborating and reviewing the same project because it's cloud-based. So here's what you need to do. Go down in the description and click on the link and that will give you a free trial to Altium Designer. You're gonna install it and open it up and start playing around with it and start placing components and then routing your traces and you're gonna see how easy it is to use. After you're done playing around with the trial, you're gonna go back in the description and click on the second link, which will give you a 30% discount when you decide to buy a license. Thank you for supporting sponsors like Altium, and thank you to Altium for supporting my channel. With everything wired up, it's time to test fire this 100 Now that I have everything wired up and I have a water pump pumping cold water to cool down the laser tube, it's now time to test fire this 100 watt CO2 laser tube. I'm really pretty nervous about test firing this because this is the first time I've test fired any CO2 laser tube, let alone this one in particular. I've got my safety glasses on and I'm gonna turn on the power supply. This thing is kind of scary. It can output up to 28,000 volts. Now the current is really low. It's 25 to 30 milliamps, but still that's enough to immediately stop your heart if you were to touch the output. Test firing the 100 watt CO2 laser tube in three, two, one. <laughs> Holy crap, look at that. It burned a hole. Did you see that fire? This thing is scary. Oh my gosh, that is so crazy. It like, burn a giant hole. This is three quarter inch plywood. All right, I'm gonna move it over a little bit and try to burn another hole here. I can't, and this is unfocused. Can you imagine what it would do if I put the focusing lens on there? That thing would go right through this piece of wood. Okay, second test fire in three, two, one. <laughs> That's crazy. 
This thing is terrifying. If I wasn't scared of it before, I sure as heck am now. I only held the test fire button down for like half a second and it burned a quarter inch through this three quarter inch plywood. That's incredible. I can't wait to see what it does when I put the focusing lens on there. I wanna see it burn right through this three quarter inch plywood. This is gonna be so awesome. Like I said, I'm gonna be releasing a whole series of videos on building the CO2 laser cutter. So you wanna make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I sincerely hope that these videos inspire you to go out and build something. I really wanna help you unleash your inner maker. If by chance you're watching this in the future and have already published the second video in this build series, you can check it out by clicking on the video here. Otherwise, you can watch the video series where I build my very own one wheel from scratch. That's definitely something you're not going to want to miss.